PLA and PETG are two of the most commonly used 3D printing filaments right now. Today, we're gonna to dive deep and figure out which one would be better for your next project, PLA or PETG. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. My name is Ryan. If you're new here, I own and operate this 3D printing business from my home office in New Jersey. Today, we are going to go over the differences between PLA and PETG and which one will be best for your next project. So before we dove into any tests, I wanted to talk about the differences between PLA and PETG before anything goes on the printer. PLA is your more generic filament that you would find at any generic 3D printing store or that you could find on Amazon. It's really the most commonly used and most consistently used across the 3D printing industry. PLA can require a lower temperature to print, usually doesn't have many issues adhering to warm or, or heated beds, and it's definitely a little bit more brittle than PETG and shouldn't be used for prototyping or any functional parts that need to hold some weight or provide more support than normal. PETG, on the other hand, is what you would normally find for prototyping parts, functional parts, or any heat resistant or outdoor parts that you would print. Uh, it's a little bit more flexible and a little bit stronger and more densely uh, used than PLA, um, but it's not necessarily inconsistent compared to PLA. It's just a little bit higher of a temperature to print, has a little bit more of a, I guess, margin for error where it comes to adhesion issues compared to PLA, um, but it's still one of the most widely used uh, filaments in the 3D printing industry. So today to test the two, I wanted to go ahead and pick three different models that we could find online. Um, I went ahead and bought two fresh rolls of Elegoo regular gray PLA and Elegoo PETG Pro gray. And we're gonna print these on two different A1 combos right next to each other. And we're gonna print these three different models and see how they differ. All right, here we are on the computer. The first print that I want to print was gonna be a normal Benchy, uh, but then I went on Maker World yesterday and someone released this 3D Bodhi and I saw it on Reddit. So we are gonna use this to test the PLA and the PETG from Elegoo and see how they come out. Got the 3D Bodhi imported into Bamboo Studio. Uh, I went ahead and changed the A1 and A1 II to the right filament, so this one's got the gray PLA. I'm just gonna use the generic profiles to keep it simple. Uh, and then this one has the PETG gray here, generic profile. So let's go ahead and sync this. We'll go ahead and change this and make sure it is generic PETG. And we're gonna slice it. It says it's gonna take us about an hour and 20 minutes with the generic PETG profile. We're gonna go ahead and send this to the printer. Now we're gonna go and switch it to A1 combo number one. Resync this, change the filament to the generic PLA Probably hear it going off in the background. And this is gonna take only about an hour and eight minutes with the generic PLA profile. So we'll go ahead and send this to the other A1 combo. They are kicked off. Now we wait and see how they come out.
So while these are printing behind me and we're waiting for them to finish up, I wanted to cover a few more things regarding PETG. PETG compared to PLA withholds and absorbs way more moisture. So that's why you see a lot of people with filament dryers or they keep their PETG in vacuum sealed bags with desiccant like this. Uh, if they live in a higher or more humid environment, it could have not only affect the printing quality of the PETG, it could also affect the longevity and the lifespan of the PETG filament. All right, the PLA 3D Bodhi finished up, looking pretty damn good. The PETG Bodhi has about 15 minutes left, so I'll come back once these are finished up, cooled off, and ready for a comparison. All right, so both are off the build plate. They cooled down for a little bit. PLA version, PETG version. Uh, the PLA version, honestly, I can't really find anything wrong with it other than some of these overhangs. So you definitely see some of the overhangs where there are no support, but all in all, pretty damn great job. Very consistent layer lines, very consistent overall. Um, some of the curvatures are, are really refined. And really the only thing I could pick out are the overhangs, but even then, pretty damn stable. All right, Petchy version, uh, definitely some issues. Cooling wise, you could tell, overhang wise. Um, definitely some stringing. Very, you could tell it's much more, I feel like, dense compared to the PLA version. Um, but all in all, I think not too bad. I would obviously much, I would go with the PLA version, but the PETG version, I mean, other than the cooling and the overhangs, which you could probably fine tune and tweak with a little bit of a better profile in the slicer, not too bad. Let's go to the other model. All right, the second thing I wanted to print and test with the PLA and PETG is a art or sculpture type of print. So I found this vase on Maker World. Uh, I like the the way the lines are layered, I like the, the shaping of it, so I think it would be a good thing to test with. Alright, got this imported into Bamboo Studio. Let's get this sliced up and sent to the two A1 combos for the PLA and Petchy comparison. Alright, with these finishing up soon, I'm going to go ahead and pack up an order I had for a golf grip trainer and then we're going to go ahead and get these off the plates and compare them. These are off the printer. Uh, so honestly, I like, I love the way that the PLA looks here um, with the shine, but the Pet G consistency and the way it feels in the hand is pretty damn impressive. There's some adhesion issues here, not nearly as bad as on the PLA version, but this stuff, man, uh, I'm very impressed on how both of these came out. Definitely some more pliability to the pet g version i could feel like it has some more give to it but it's still sturdy and supportive this doesn't move as much but it's still supportive and sturdy so it's really going to come down to where you're using this and how you're using it for pla or pla silk it'll look great um, but if you're going to use this for outside you're going to put it outside anywhere in a heated environment or anything like that you'd probably want to use pet g so that it doesn't degrade quicker, uh, it doesn't cause any issues, and you're not really looking at any degradability at that point. Okay, the third test I wanna run is going to be a snap fit and functional print. So we're going to use this small print in place box, uh, probably take about an hour and a half. Uh, we'll print this on both of the printers and see how it compares PLA to PETG. Got this one imported into Bamboo Studio. Let's slice it up and send it out. All right, we got both of these finished up. Uh, I, I'm gonna be honest, both of them came out pretty damn great. 
but I will have to say this this round will need to go to the Pet G. Um, phenomenal. It's still pliable, still flexible, but man, it is snug. It is fit. The latch is secure. There's no movement in this box whatsoever. The PLA version had some issues printing overhang here, um, latch here, and when you put it together, it's just a little bit loose. But I, I don't know if that's anything to do with the filament itself or if that's the way it's sliced and, and whatnot. But both of them turned out great. So I, I truly, truly, it's hard to give this one up, but I will have to go pet G on this one in terms of durability, functionality, and what this design is made for. And you want a strong case that is going to keep your things secure. So pet G is the way to go. So to recap some things that we talked about in today's video, it's really gonna be on a case by case scenario on what filament you're gonna use. If you're printing things for fun or printing things for family, uh, or, and it's not really anything that requires structural integrity um, or proficiency in that way, PLA is gonna be your best way to go for pricing, for accessibility, for all types of different ways. If you're printing things for outdoor use, for uh, heat resistant use, for things to be stronger or for things to be help holding things in place around your home, Pet G is going to be the solution for you and for your projects. All right, guys, that's all we got for today's video. As always, I appreciate the support. Please like the video, comment down below, give me your thoughts and your feedback, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next one.